the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi guys and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Microsoft To Do to create and organize lists. Now I've always been a big list maker. For some reason I get a crazy amount of satisfaction from starting my day with a bunch of incomplete tasks and crossing them off one by one. And as a lover of all things stationary, getting me to switch from my trusty paper notebook to a digital to-do list was a process that took me quite a while. But I've now been using Microsoft To Do for about three years. And looking back, I think I would struggle to go back to a handwritten list. I find it super convenient to be able to create my to-do list when I'm working in Outlook at my desktop or if I'm on the go using the mobile app. And in fact, I think I probably use the mobile app more than anything else as it's always there with me in my pocket. And the thing I love about it is just being able to keep track of everything I need to do and also have a record of what's been completed. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how to get started with Microsoft To Do if you've never used it before. Now, as with everything in Microsoft, there are numerous different ways to access Microsoft To Do, but you will need to have a Microsoft 365 account. Now, one of the ways you can access it is you can work from a browser by jumping to todo.microsoft.com. You can then sign in using your credentials and start working with Microsoft To Do online within Microsoft 365. Alternatively, you'll also see on this page that you can download the Microsoft To Do app to your phone and it's available for Android, Windows Phone and also iOS. So this might be something that you want to do from your phone if you just jump into the App Store, for example, search for To Do and you should be able to download it that way. Now what I'm going to use for this demonstration is I'm actually going to use the desktop version of To Do. So I'm using Windows 10 and if I jump down to my start menu at the bottom and type in to do, you can see that one of the apps that I have installed is Microsoft to do. So let's jump into here and see what it's all about. Now, depending on how you've accessed Microsoft to do, you may be prompted to import lists from Wonderlist. Now, if you're not aware, Wonderlist is another very popular list making application. But if you decided that you want to make the switch to Microsoft to do, it does make it very simple to import existing lists. Now, I don't get that when I log into mine, but I have seen it pop up, particularly in the online version. So if that's something you want to do, then you can import your Wonderlists. Now, the first thing we need to understand when working in to do is what kind of lists can we manage? And what you'll see is that on the left hand side, I have a main menu that's divided down into two parts. In the top part, we have the different ways that we can organize our information. And in the lower half, I have my lists. So let's start with the top half of this menu. The first option we have here is called my day. And this is where you can add tasks to your day so you can see exactly what needs to be done today. We then have important, and this is going to show any tasks that you've flagged as important. We have a planned section. So this is where any tasks that have a due date set in the future, this is where they'll live. We then have an assigned to you area. So any tasks that have been assigned specifically to you are going to show in here. And finally, we just have an area where we can essentially create unassigned tasks. Now, when I say unassigned tasks, what I mean are tasks that don't belong to a list. And we'll talk about this more a little bit later on. Now, in the lower half of this menu, this is where I have all of my different lists. And I've created all of these. You can see I have my shared lists. I have some tasks underneath work lists. And then I have a group called clients, which contains client A, and any tasks I have for that client, and then client B and tasks for that client too. 
Now, the way that you decide to create your tasks is entirely up to you. Some people prefer to just jump into tasks and start adding new tasks at the bottom of the screen here. Now, remember I said that when you add them this way, the tasks are essentially just going to be sitting here as unassigned. Now, the way that I prefer to do it is I like to create a list first and then create my task from within the list. It just means that I'm not constantly having to come back to unassigned tasks and move to new lists that I've created. So let's start out by creating a new list. I'm going to go over to the menu on the left hand side and right at the bottom and click on the new list link. I can now add a name for my list. So let's call this um, design ideas. Click away and I now have a design ideas list. While I'm here, I'm going to create another one and I'm going to call this Client C and click away to set that. Now it's worth noting that with any of these lists that you create, if you right click over the top of any of them, you're going to get a contextual menu pop up. So you can do things like rename your list. You can share this list with other people. You can move the list to a different group. You can print the list. You can pin it to your start menu in Windows 10. You can duplicate the list and you can also delete the list. So I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked on client C. I'm going to right click and I'm actually going to move this list to my clients group. Now, if I want to reorder these so you can see that client C is at the top of the list and I actually want it underneath client B, I can just click and drag and drop to reorganize those lists. Now you'll also notice that next to my list, I've injected a little bit of fun by adding an icon to represent that list. Now I will say that if you're using the desktop version like I am or the online version, you don't have the option to add these little icons. The way that I did this was that I opened the to do app on my mobile phone and then I just added an emoji when I was naming my lists. So that's a little bit of a tip there if you want to liven up what your lists look like. So now that I have a couple of new lists, I might want to start adding some tasks. So I'm going to click on Client C and right at the bottom here, if I click on Add Task, I can then type in my task name. Once I've named it, hit the Enter key and that is now listed as a task for this particular client. If I want to edit the details of this task, I can click on it and it's going to let me view the task details in a pane on the right hand side. So let's go through the type of information that we can add into each of our tasks. Now at the top here, I get a choice of adding different steps. So this is kind of like adding a mini task list for a task. So maybe I have to take some steps or do some things prior to this call with Sally Smith. So what I could say here is I could add a step. I might want to prep my notes ahead of the meeting. I might want to get feedback. From other team members. And I might want to book. A meeting room. So these in themselves are kind of like mini tasks that make up the general overall task. Now you don't have to add those in, but it is quite a useful little feature to keep you on track. Now, if this meeting was occurring today, I could choose to add this to my day. And as I said, over in the left hand pane, the first option that we have here is my day, which is going to show any tasks that you need to do on that particular day. I can set a reminder. So I'm going to say tomorrow. I can add something like a due date. Let's set that to tomorrow as well. And then I can select if this is a task that's going to repeat. So if you have maybe something that occurs weekly, daily, monthly, you can choose a recurrence option in here. You can then select if you want to assign this task to yourself or somebody else. And you can also do things like attach any additional information as a file and add some additional notes. Once you've added all of these details, you can click the arrow at the bottom to just dismiss that detail view. So very simple to create a task within a list. Now let's for the moment jump back to our unassigned tasks list. So I've added in three unassigned tasks. And the way that I did that was just by clicking add task at the bottom to add them into here. 
So now maybe I want to assign these unassigned tasks to a particular list. So this one at the bottom here is related to client C. So all I need to do is click, drag and drop it onto client C to move that task across. I'm going to move this phone call to client B and then I'm going to move this task to client A. And I would always advise that you do do this with unassigned tasks just to keep them organized. Now, if you have any tasks that are of particular importance and you really want to highlight those and make them stand out, maybe they're tasks that you're going to deal with first, you'll see if you hover over any task, you have a little star icon on the right hand side. If I click it, it's going to mark this task as important and I can now see that under the important area on the left hand side. So in general, when I'm managing my tasks, anything that I need to deal with right away, I'll mark them as important. So I just have a big long list of all of the things that I need to deal with first. Now, one thing that you also might notice here is that for each of these different areas, I have different background colors. So this important area is kind of a pinky color. If I jump across to planned, that's more of a teal color. Assigned to you is green, tasks is blue, so on and so forth. Now, of course, you can change these background colors. If you click on the three dots in the top right hand corner, you have different themes that you can apply. So I could choose to add a solid color or I could add a picture background. I also have some sorting options up here as well. So if my lists start to get particularly long, I can sort them by due date, ones that have been added to my day. I can sort the tasks alphabetically or by when they were created. Now, how you choose to organize your tasks is entirely up to you. As I mentioned, some people like to add all of their tasks due today to my day so that they can see everything that needs to be done before they leave the office. Other people prefer to add tasks to lists and switch between those lists. And my advice really to you would be to use to do for a while and then just see what works best for you. Now we've seen how we can move and manage tasks within lists, but let's now take a look at how we can organize our lists. So I've got quite a few lists going on here. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I also have one group. So my group here is called clients. And then underneath that, I have all of my lists related to my different clients. And creating a group is super simple. We have a little icon just here. And when we hover over, it says create a new group. So I'm going to call this group meetings and hit enter. And I can now assign different lists to this particular group. And once again, it's just a case of dragging and dropping. So let's move design ideas to the meetings group. I'm going to click drag and drop and I've now organized that list underneath the group of meetings and I could go through and add new lists and assign to the relevant groups. Now these groups are collapsible and expandable. So that's really going to help if you start to have quite a lot of groups that contain different lists. You can just expand the ones that's relevant at that particular time. Now, task lists can be shared with other people, but you need to be aware that there are some limitations. So lists can only be shared within an organization or between personal Microsoft accounts. But let me show you how you can share a list with someone else. So the first thing you need to do is click on the list that you want to share. So I'm going to click on client B because Adam also works with client B. So I want to share this task list with him. Now to do that is a simple process of going up to my icon in the top right hand corner where it says sharing options. What I can then do is send an invite to Adam via an email. Or alternatively, I can click copy link. The link to this list will get copied to the clipboard and I can then open up an Outlook email and paste it in and send it to him. Or alternatively, I could post it in something like a Teams channel or a private chat conversation with him. And of course, if anybody shares a list with you, you're going to find that underneath my shared lists. Now, earlier on in this video, I briefly mentioned assigning tasks. So this is another way of essentially sharing a task with somebody else. So if I click on the client A list just here, 
I might see this task at the bottom, follow up on email from Michael Thompson. Now I might think to myself, actually, Adam's got a really great relationship with Michael Thompson, so this task might be better for him to complete. So what I can do is click on the task to open it up, click on assign to, and then you can choose a member of your list to assign this task to. So in order for you to see other people listed up here, you need to have sent them a link to this list and they need to have accepted that in order for you to be able to select them. So I'm still waiting for Adam to accept the invitation to this list. So I'm going to assign this task to myself for the time being. And you can see as soon as you assign a task, it's going to say who it's assigned to. So in this case, assigned to me. And I'll also then find that task under the assigned to you section in the left hand menu. So that is it. That is a very quick overview of how to use the main features in Microsoft to do. Hopefully that's enough to get you started and excited about organizing tasks and to do items. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.